Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday Sit Rep. Merry Christmas Eve day from all of us here at Brick Mania. As usual, we have plenty of new releases and uh, uh, pre-orders ready to hit brickmania.com, especially for Vietnam bricks. So let's dive in, take a little closer look. All right, so kicking things off, we're taking a closer look at the A37B Dragonfly designed by Nicholas Kramer. Uh, Brennan was our project manager, so he's gonna tell us a little bit more about this prototype build. It obviously has a big, nasty loadout on it, and I love the colors. <laughs> so those are, my, those are my initial reactions. Tell me a little bit more about uh, what's going on with this bot model. Well, um, we really went all out with the, uh, with the printing on this one. You can't really see it yet, aside from you may take note of the, the lovely canopy sticker that, uh, that Slam has worked on here. And you'll be glad to know that we haven't just given you this sticker and said, good luck. Um, Slam actually uh, planned out a, a little instruction on the sticker sheet. How to put sheet. it on, nice. It tells you exactly how to do it. You actually line up the canopy with the sticker sheet itself. It Love it. It you exactly how to do it. We meant to put an apology on there, but you'll have to take that from me. <laughs> um, so, other than that, uh, like I said, there's gonna be you, you've got your loadout here, big nasty loadout here. You've got these four things which look kind of like bombs. They're drop tanks. Right. Um, but you can drop a drop tank on someone. So I guess, <laughs> you know, it's, it's fuel. It's flammable. If it's mm -hmm. already on fire, just make it more on fire. <laughs> um, got a couple of bombs hanging under each wing. And then we're going to have some rocket pods as well. Yeah, hydro rockets, right? As well as, you can't really see it very well now uh, since it's not actually printed on there. But in this little space here, uh, right behind or right beside our refueling probe and back here you're gonna have a cannon printed on there nice. and a little minigun sitting on there the nose can yeah which that minigun compartment in the front of this thing is kind of crazy in, in oh, real life <laughs> seriously um, yeah as far as uh, external printing you're gonna get that cannon you're gonna get uh, stars and bars it sounds like stars and bars you've yep. got uh, one set on the wing here and then they'll be on the sides uh, of the back. Nice. You're going to get uh, tail markings. Those are all printed as well on both sides. I've uh, got fuel, uh, fuel tank caps. So you've got yep. a pair of those on the wings. So one here and one here. You've got them on the tip tanks as well here mm -hmm. and here sitting in a bit of a diagonal. And then you've got one on each of your drop tanks as well. So you've got them on the top there. Boy, the profile of this thing is crazy. I mean, just the, the, the sleekness of it is, is nuts. And you can also see why it was called the Dragonfly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, that, is, that is a Dragonfly if I ever did see one. Right. It's got this huge bulbous canopy here. It's got the wings. It just, it looks right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we also have plenty of printing going on inside here. If I can pop this off. Can't really see it yet, but you're going to have lovely little gun sight. Uh, control panel with these wonderful absolutely wonderful uh, oh, joysticks like controls yeah them. look at that i have never seen that done before and i love it um it's kind of almost a play feature it's it totally <laughs> is um that's really cool well done nick yeah so you got your control panel you have a throttle assembly in between uh, the control panel it doesn't mm -hmm. cover anything up we specifically did that uh mm -hmm. you got your ejector seats that will print on as well in here um, and I think that's the majority of the printing on this thing, so. Comes with one minifigure, right? Mm-hmm, yep, normally these things uh, would fly, if, if you're flying with a loadout like this, you're probably only bringing one guy, because you don't have any kind of like complex radar where you need right. your, uh, your git or guy, or gib, guy in the back. Um, so, but they would occasionally carry two if, if it's more acting as leading in your close air support. So mm -hmm. if they're spotting uh, enemy emplacements and making sure that we're not, you know, getting any blue on blue, right. uh, you'll bring an observer along. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so just one minifig for this kid. Very, very cool. Definitely a, a cool addition to Vietnam bricks because this is kind of something that I don't know if, I mean, obviously it's iconic because of its shape, but it isn't one that maybe people were expecting to be in the lineup this time around. Well, seriously, I mean, even the, the people back then, they were kind of like skeptical about it because it's, it's, it's a trainer or it was, right. and they literally slapped some tip tanks on it and gave it some armament. Um, it, it was bad enough that people called it uh, the super tweet, which is what I keep calling it. That's uh -huh. just what I know it as. 
because uh, the the trainer was called the Tweet. Right. Um, and also the six thousand pound dog whistle, mm -hmm. just because of the kind of that it made of, yeah. the, of the jet engines. It just didn't have the roar of like a Thunder Chief or something. Sure. So people people kind of looked down it, but I think everyone who flew it were were very happy with its performance. So it's uh, unassuming. I suppose you could say. Well, and a wild looking aircraft brought yeah. into a really, really cool looking build and an excellent addition uh, on pre-order now for Vietnam Bricks, as we were saying. So this is once again, the A37B Dragonfly designed by Nicholas Kramer. Brennan, thanks for checking in. All right, moving on, we're taking a look at the Centurion Mark V-1 designed by John Canepa. Nate was our project manager for this beastly tank build. Uh, as usual, we've got some extra little greebles and some uh, John Canepa additions to this, but man, those road wheels really, really bring this, uh, bring this printing out to front. Yeah, so this was a somewhat of an update of our older art for the Centurion back when we originally did it in t uh, late 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, that was for when the Centurion was more of its Korean War stage. But right. Because development for the Centurion began like at the very end of World War II, right. starting in like mid late 1945, and they just kind of realized, hey, this is a good tag, isn't it, Jim? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yes, indeed. And then they just like started making a ton of them, and by Korea, it was one of the best tanks on the field. Mm -hmm. It was really one of the first true MBTs of the world. and it, Which is cool. And easily one of the best tanks of the Cold War, because kind of like the, kind of like the, uh, the Patton lineup, it's, there's just a lot of variations, but with the Centurion, it kind of kept more or less the similar look throughout the whole, the whole lineup. This, this one in particular is the Mark uh, five slash one, mm -hmm. and this was this one was specifically used by the Australian armor divisions. Right. But, so they had about fifty eight deployed during the Vietnam War, and only six were like knocked out beyond repair. Entirely, yeah. Pretty yeah, impressive. and that is uh, a pretty good track record. It's a good ratio. Too. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, you have stickers here, stickers here. That's mainly because of the angling, the cross uh, element, and stuff on the side. Yep. yep. We got uh, we got some uh, call signs over here. Couple optional sticker call signs for the front. Nice. Uh, you got some more printed road wheels up the front. You got a hatch that opens and closes. I think there's a couple pieces missing, but that's just because, well, this is a prototype model. Mm -hmm. oh, and I noticed that that barrel really depresses accurately because I know yeah, one of the this things one this just, tank was known for was yeah, being able to do that. Yeah, this is a tank that, that can just like go, look, go to like here's an infantry soldier right here. It can just do that and just say no. See ya. Yeah. yeah. Right. I also really love the color contrast on this. Yeah. It's like primarily dark tan, except for like the spots that don't have red, that that don't come in dark tan. But it mm -hmm. adds like a nice top contrast. This pops out, and I love that this front bit is olive green. That, yeah, right. Yeah, this dark t tan olive green is a really nice uh, flow to it because I've seen a lot of like custom World War II cameras where it's like tan dark tan dark tan olive green, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. But I like seeing one of those colors kind of invert it where like one of the more uh, secondary colors becomes the primary. Yeah, absolutely. And on this, it came out really well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I got some chains, uh, rolls really well. I think Kind of some simulated suspension there as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Gotta love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, simulated suspension. <laughs> The same as regular suspension. Anyways, and uh, then it looks like we've got some extra printed stuff, which, like I was saying beforehand, definitely uh, signature uh, yes, John we, additions to yes, it. Yes, we have Vegemite because Australia. I have a joke. <laughs> we even called it G'day Mate. G'day Mate. <laughs> really well got to just slam. play up the stereotype. Well done, Slam. And we also have a a box of boxes. This is supposed to simulate four boxes stacked on top of each, on top of each other. Oh sure, okay. One of them is up, upside down, but you know it's Australia. Yeah, so. we're we're stacking it any way we can. Yeah. Cool but additions aside from there that, as well. Yeah, this is a like. Oh, you also have like some opening hatches here on the front that are hard to get to, but you can open them. Okay. Fantastic. Well, there you have it. Definitely, uh, considering the uh, the Australian side hasn't been super explored, it is a, a very unique addition uh, to Vietnam bricks and on pre-order and available right now on Brickmania.com. Nate, thanks for checking in, my man. Dingo. And of course, we can't forget the modern Army rifleman V2. Available now on BrickMania.com as well. Like I said in the preview video, Landon's on vacation, so we will have him in studio at a different time to talk a little bit more about the 
little details that are included on these uh, updated figures. But for my part, I can say that you can tell that there's uh, 3D printed uh, and UV printed headgear. Uh, they do include those uh, those brand new brick arms as well. So everything you see here is pictured and they're available in all three of those flesh tones. Just like the uh, modern, the previous uh, Army Rifleman and the Modern Marine Rifleman as well, we will be doing our best to restock these regularly so that people can begin to build up their crews uh, with updated figures, etc. Uh, otherwise, I know I'm sure this initial batch will go very, very quickly because, well, these figures look phenomenal. <laughs> There's just not much more to say about them. Online now on BrickMania.com. As I said, we will have a, a longer segment with more detail uh, from the man himself when he returns from vacation. All right, Brick Maniacs, that will do it for the Friday sit rep. Once again, from all of us here at Brick Mania, have a very safe and wonderful holidays. We will see you again right back here on Monday. Thank you very much for watching.